Harvey, welcome on my show, my friend. Mr. Cotrell. How are you? I'm all right, you know. You're a legend, you know. I know, and you are. are you, <laughs> you're a football legend. <laughs> I wish, I wish. Um, do you know what? Fuck it out. It's good to have you on. Like, your energy's crazy. It's woke Thank me up you, a little. It's woke me up more than my coffee life, today. Really. I, like, I love it. I fucking I love, love it. I love life, man. I love life. That's, it's the best way. Um, I want to get straight into it. Um, I want to talk to you, not just purely about, obviously, your career, as everyone knows you as Officer Solid Crew, but I want to talk about, you know, depth of it you know your childhood yeah. how you brought up mm. and what got you out of that those situations so tell me through your childhood so my childhood was, was quite crazy so my dad was a J jamaican man come from jamaica um he ended up in in the navy he met my mom who was from cardiff yeah <laughs> well, i know it's mad that is. Same yeah, yeah, yeah. As you. yeah my mom's a, my mom's a doc's girl <laughs> but my mom went to uh, my mom's uh, mother lived in plymouth so she went to like obviously go to plymouth because she was being a bit of a tear away as a youngster, <laughs> ran, ran away to her mum's and then obviously my dad docked as a naval man in Plymouth because obviously he's got docks yeah, too. Yeah. And that's how, and then obviously they, they made me, didn't they? <laughs> and then um, within that time, we moved to um, South London because that's where obviously a lot of my dad's family was, my aunties and my cousins. And we moved to a, a famous area called Battersea, Clapham Junction. Yeah. Um, the famous streets there, man. And that's where, I, that's where I, was, I was born and raised. The first estate that I lived on for anyone that's from South London or from that area, I lived in a state called Dodderton Estate, the notorious Dodderton Estate. Um, notorious. That, yeah, notorious. <laughs> um, you'd probably, if you're going to compare it to American terms, you'd probably say like the Bronx or Harlem. To a ghetto. Yeah, Clapham Junction. So it was a tough area. Um, my dad was well how, known. How, t how tough, like, mm. you know, how tough was that as a kid growing up in that kind of area? Did you... You know, obviously for coming away from there and how, how well you've done since. Yeah. When you're involved in anything, you, you don't see any different. Of course. So what, what were you feeling at that particular moment when you were, you know, a young kid? Do you know what? I didn't particularly, like I said, because you're in that environment is, is your norm, isn't it? Yeah. So you're not going to be like, oh, I live in the ghetto. Yeah. Like this is just your everyday life. And around the times I was growing up, there was a community. So I still loved it. Like, you know, you wake up in the morning, you'd be playing on the block or you go and play football in the pen. You know what I mean? It yeah. is what it is. There was a community. It's not like today where kids were just sitting there like posted on the block just looking for violence and there's no youth clubs anymore. There's no outlet. Kids don't want to be out there doing sport. There was still a fun element to the ghetto. But I probably started probably noticing like the culture of gangs probably like, yeah, 13, 14. Because obviously if, I'm from, if you're from Clapham Junction, Clapham Junction and Brixton don't get on. Yeah, of course. So in Brixton, there was a gang called the 28s, the famous 28s. Everyone knows them like legendary name and... I'm from Clapham Junction, so we're known as Junction Boys. And um, yeah, as, as once you started to get to that age, you started to realise that um, you can't get caught slipping in Brixton because it could be a bit of a serious yeah, yeah. situation. But then it, it kind of come from our father's era. Because then if I go back to my dad's era, my dad would still tell me stories of him warring with Brixton guys. And I'd be like, bloody hell, like, say no, like, my dad's in his 60s. So I think it was something that we kind of like, you inherit. All the boys like myself, myself, Mega Man from So Solid, Romeo, we're all Battersea boys. Like we all, we was all in beef with different areas, but it's like something, something that we kind of inherited from. Do you know what? Yeah, that's what that's what youngsters. that's what like makes yeah. me makes me laugh a little bit today. Is because yeah. obviously we get older, we got kids of like certain yeah. ages. They speak to us like we've never grown up, we've never been a kid ourselves, Literally. and there's never been kind of like gangs yeah. back in the day for us. But as you say, it's always been there. But it's just escalated a little bit more, I think, these it's got days. More I said, do you know what it is? I think that it, it's not about that. Gangs has always been there, period. Mm. No matter what era, what whatever um, smoke screen these new kids are living in. Um, but the fact is, is it's more the death toll mm. and the amount of violence is ridiculous. Like, as, as someone dying was a big thing in our community. Yeah, there'd be lots of stabbings, a few shootings, but um, someone dying was a big thing. Whereas now it's just the norm. You know, my mum was the the boss of Wands of Borough Council and she had an incident, you know, I don't know if you've seen it on the news, about a year and a half ago, a young kid got chased in South London by a group of 13 year olds and he was about 13, 14, 14 himself and they stabbed him to death. Now, because my mum is obviously well respected and she looks after all the youth within that community, my mum met the parents, imagine that. Yeah. Obviously. Imagine that, Yeah. You, you know, that's like a village in, why do eight people, eight boys chasing him and you're repeatedly stabbing him? How much, how many more times do you need to stab yeah, him, exactly, stab yeah. him before you achieve the darkness you want to achieve on this kid's soul? So I think now it's more like that kids, they're doing it. We done it because there was a reason. We done it to defend ourselves. I, I don't wake up in the morning and go, I'm just gonna go and hurt someone. Yeah. I'm just gonna go and rob an old person. Are you having a laugh? I was raised better than that. 
I just got told by my parents, anyone fucks with you, you defend yourself. Yeah, of course. And I can look after myself. But these kids now are thinking that, like, as a coach, let me just carry a little flicky a knife in my mm. in my Gucci man bag with my Gucci belt on yeah. and my trousers halfway down my ass, ass, and that makes me bad. You're a fucking prick, mate. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. Because real gangsters... Don't do that shit. Don't do that shit. Real gangsters are actually gentlemen. Mm. My friends that are actually real gangsters that have lived it, you can read about these fellas in the, the book Gangs of London... They don't rate all that. You don't go and... Gangsters deal with gangsters. You just yeah. don't go and hurt innocent people or just want to go and, you know, outnumber a kid and stab him 27 times. Like, that's that's just cold-blooded murder, man. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah. So, so what... Um, so you, you're seeing all that and obviously we, we spoke about what we just did there in, in today's society. What actually got you away from like the gang the gang life and what put you on the right path of for you to follow where you were going as you achieved today? My mum running a youth club. My mum, you know, and, and my dad, you know, my dad was a gangster, bro. But my dad never showed me nothing to do with that life. He was such a good father in terms of he was very anti. Like, my son don't need to know what I'm doing. He knows what my reputation is when he goes out there. Yeah. But my dad would never, ever, you know, try and promote me to, to live that life. So I didn't, you know, I've got cousins, you know, in the area that looked after me. Um, I was well protected. But I think my mum having a youth club gave us an outlet and our outlet was football. Yeah. Because within that outlet, you know, my mum's, my stepfather who passed away, who's tattooed on my fingers, my mum's um, ex-partner who, ex-partner, former partner who passed, who ran the club with my mum. He ran the, the best football team in South London. And you're talking that football team breeded yeah. Clinton, Morrison, yeah. who you know, Sean Davis, who you know, too many so ballers. The standard was crazy, Too many yeah? ballers. Jody Morris, his team beat us in a cup final. I'll never forget, I cried my eyes out. Because <laughs> <laughs> he with Jody was just unbelievable at, at them times. So the, the, half of the boys that I've just named, you've played against mm. or played with. So that was our breeding ground. Within that youth club, man, there was just so much talent and football saved us. So by the time we got to 15, all of us was getting scouted. Like, obviously, Palace came for Clinton. Chelsea came for me. Obviously, Jody was at Chelsea from bloody nine years old. Anyway, he went. He done all the Lillard yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. He done done all that. And uh, like I said, Sean was at Wimbledon. Funny enough, do you know Sean got got um, released from Wimbledon for, for um, jumping a cab to the training ground. That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and then ended up at Fulham. Yeah, that's much. <laughs> so it worked out better for him. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Imagine it's, that. It's so much better. But for Kevin him. Keegan loved him. He was like, I can't this boy. Can't. He's, he's definitely going to play in the Prem. He was such a good player. So that saved all of us. Do you know what I mean? We all come from the... You know, when I turn around and I see Clinton presenting Sky Sports News, I'm like, I love it. Yeah, I know, I love it. I love like, it, honestly. Clinton's from the hood. Yeah. Like, and that's what I like about Clinton on Sky Sports News. He's himself. He don't change for no one. Yeah? You know? I remember when he first started, he was telling me that, you know, people was going, oh, he's ghetto and all this. Like, what's ghetto? Him being himself. Yeah, exactly. Just because he ain't playing the game and he's talking who he is. Yeah. And now, look, everyone loves Clinton. And you know what? Fuck that everyone loves him. He's actually very good at his job. Of course he is. Clinton knows the game. He knows the game inside and out. He's been like that since a kid. Obsessed with football. Do you know so, what? I just feel yeah. like just because he's he's going on there and being himself, like you say, and whereas before, you know, certain people on the panels or whatever, yeah. they, they talk a certain way or they get like the stereotypical yeah. type of person to, to be involved. P things evolve. You need to get real people who's going to talk there you real go. sense. He's played the game. There you go. And... How can you talk to Clinton? He's played in the World Cup, bro. Exactly, yeah. Like, yeah, you see Clinton, he always hops on about, yeah, I played against Ronaldo, <laughs> the real one. All right, mate. Any more name drops? I know, honestly. But you R9 can't knock it. Like, when, he sh when we first seen that picture, when Clinton went to, to the World Cup with Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and we seen him next to Ronaldo, Clinton from the, the youth club, like, fuck Did hell. that proper inspire you? Of course it did. It inspired. We, we inspired each other because, you know, you got Sean playing in the Premier League for Fulham, and having an amazing career. Clinton Clinton playing for Palace and Birmingham City and yeah. playing in the World Cup. And then me joining So Solid and, and winning Brit Awards and Mobos and selling millions of records. We all come from the same youth club, bro. So, so do you know, like, it's, <laughs> the talent's it's crazy, mad. isn't it? It's Fuck, mad. it's mad. No, mad. It's, it's not, no, no, You'll never it. get that again. Never. It's never. impossible. Never. I don't know, that's crazy, never. like, fucking levels. You know, with, um, before you, obviously the boys went out to get signed professional contracts. You were at Chelsea, you said, yeah? That's right. So, Obviously, you didn't make as a footballer. Yeah. When the boys made as a footballer and you didn't, what were you thinking at that time? It was hard because obviously when it, when I was at Barnet, I went from Chelsea to Barnet. Yeah, I remember you there. That's right. Yeah. Then, of course. And then I got given um, six months pro at Barnet. But you just knew at the time, Ray Clements just got the um, 
the England goalkeeper's job. Yeah. And Ray loved me. And if Ray was there, I would have been playing regular. But then, you know, Ray leaves, goes to England. The manager that comes in, Terry Bullivan, wanker. And I hope he watches this. He's a wanker. <laughs> and he's a racist Is prick. It? Yeah. Can't stand him. Anyway. That, do you... F <laughs> I, The old school guys back then. Yeah. It was just different. Like I just th I, even different. I just think about things back in the day of like yeah. youth team and the managers and or the whatever that and, and they things, they would it? say I know I just think no you wouldn't last fucking two mm -hmm. seconds right now never not what, what in touch sensitive society now yeah. you know like I said I was actually having this discussion with my um my wife's mum last night and someone got offended by someone saying people of color now I'm a black man and I thought that's harsh because if I was talking about something now if I went you know there's say footballers get racially, uh, racially abused, um, you know, players of colour. That's not offensive to mm. me. But we live in such a touch-sensitive environment now, you can't say nothing. Yeah, you can't say People nothing. of colour to me is not racist. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it was just it was just different it's times. Just, yeah. The things that half of the football managers said on the training grounds, as you know, yeah. It's mental. Now he hits me sometimes. I was like, he's actually racist. Mm. He was racist. I remember like Terry Bullivan said to me, you're just a cocky black boy from South London. Now that terminology within itself, it's just, you're just a cocky black yeah. boy. If, what's my colour got to do with me coming from it's South got, London? Why can't I just be a if boy? You, yeah, if you just say like you're a cocky boy, yeah, that's different. Yeah, it's cool. You can say that. That's your opinion. But that's what I mean. That's what I feel like. That's what I always say. You know, yeah. what, when it comes to like, you know, race or whatever it might be, it's kind of like, if anything goes wrong, we say they're race. Whereas like no one ever goes, oh, you're just a cocky that's white right. boy. There you go. Why would you say what? that? I and you know, you know, you like I said, Cots, man, you played at the bloody highest level, man. You've been around so much ethnicities and different managers, good ones, cunty ones. Yeah, you know? exactly, yeah exactly that. You've lived it. That was your field. Mm. And I just never forget it. Like, once I got released from there, I knew that it was going skew with. And I, obviously in the semi-pro game, come on, I've had a great career. I've played in the conference all my life. I've played yeah. for the best clubs in non-league football. I've played for AFC Wimbledon and I've played for um, Aldershot. So it was still good. Cause these are big clubs that I supported. You know, you're getting 5,000 5, mm. fans and I still had a good career. But then watching your mates go on to be professional footballers, you know, um, watching Hayden, uh, Mullins go on, watching Clinton crack on. I felt worthless. Did, did you? I felt worthless, did you, bro. Did you ever feel like a kind of jealousy or were you actually like you're proud of them because obviously you're still yeah. in touch with these boys now but a part of you does make things why the fuck can it be me a humble jealousy not a jealousy like oh why more like you still wanted them to succeed but you wanted yeah, you to like, succeed why can't that, that yeah. be me like why yeah. you know why do I have to feel that adversity and I'm so dedicated in everything that I do so it was just tough like mentally I remember that year like how old are you at that age caught blind so you gotta think I got re released at about 18 18 19 because I remember like being in a nightclub on a Friday night at 19 after I got released. Mm. And I started to like MC locally with Romeo. And I was like, I, come on, that's a football. Could you do a bit back in the day anyway? Like, it, yeah, I could always yeah, speak. Yeah, everyone knew me. Because like, Cause you had a bit. Yeah, 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 everyone knew that. Like, even the boys that you would know that you've played with, be like, I remember Harves used to MC on the coach. Like, I remember like lads we used to come back like after we win. Yeah, yeah would, you, would you go on the mic at the yeah, front of the bus? Yeah, I'd be like on the bus, like <laughs> rapping in that. I used to be like, this is quality. Yeah, I love it. Like, uh, gospel true, a great story. Do you know when we was number one? It yeah. 21 seconds. Um, Rio was at Man U. And obviously they got, you know, you lot got um, yeah. TVs in the dressing room, innit? And like, they're preparing for a game, innit? And like, 21 seconds come on, and like, Rio, like, seeing it. I remember when I seen him, he was like, what the f... <laughs> <laughs> Junior... He's on fucking top of the pops. <laughs> like, I remember that like, when Rio was like, fuck my life. You didn't even this, know you'd be on there. The geezer's number one. What the hell? <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Do you, know, so, do you know when you were actually, do you know when you were, um, you know, recording that song? Yeah. Did you all sense in the, the group that like, this can, is going to be special? No. No? I Not until. Because it blew up, didn't it? Fuck yeah, me, it blew up Not massively. until it came back. Because John was weird. When I actually recorded my verse, yeah, you know, semi-pro yeah, yeah. I was on the way back from Aldershot. I had, a, had a big game on a Saturday. So say like Thursday night training. Yeah. So I'm on the train and I'm coming home back to Cumberland Junction from Aldershot. Mega Man rings me and says, at the time I'm still like, I'm just emptying on the radio and I'm just starting to drain so solid. And he's like, listen, you need to come and record this verse. This is idea 21 seconds. So I've literally got off the train, carried on my train journey to Waterloo and we're recording at EMI Studios. Now that is a big studio. Yeah, yeah. But to me, <laughs> tell me I'm going to Anfield yeah, no, yeah, I, you're buzzing I, I, more. Yeah, I don't give a what, yeah. what the fuck's that? Yeah, three letters. What the fuck's that? <laughs> Obviously now, 
being a professional musician. I was like, okay, got to this fancy studio and all these like corporate people. Now I'm, now I'm saying it now. Albert Samuels, my manager, and Jason Samuels, um, my management, ASM, tell yeah. them, seen them put up the thing for you the other yeah. day. And I'm like, all these guys, like these, you know, like lovely Jewish guys in there. And this was our management at the time. I didn't know. And I'm going, what's going on here? And then I'm recording this verse and them lot got a stop clock and telling me to stop. And I remember having an argument. I said, I don't feel like it. I'm meant to end here. Yeah. It don't sound right. You know, music's done in bars, eight bars, 16 bars. I said, it sounds like I'm meant to continue. And that, you know, Meg was like, trust me, trust me, just stop. And then when I got the vid when I got the sorry, the song back, I said, I ain't heard anything like this. It's had this feeling like this is special. Right. This is like a British version of Wu-Tang Clan. Yeah. This is a collective. A British collective of black boys. You don't fucking how, see how that many, shit. How many guys were in the in the group? Artist wise, like, um, there's nine of us artists. Mm. But then if you talk about the whole firm, yeah, look, so many. Could be a hundred of us if we wanted it to. That's bro. mad. That's... And I'm talking. That's like DJs. Yeah, we had our own district record label distribution. So solid was designed to bring in all of our community. So like, for example, you go to the social lit office, right? You got like Mega's cousin doing admin. That's wicked. You got like Oxide's brother doing all the record runs on his moped, dropping it to all the record <laughs> shops. Like, man, I it, love was, it. it was such a chain. Like, and yeah. So, so you've gone from basically playing semi-pro football, yeah. to then smashing it. Yeah. How did you cope with that that fame in such a split second? Like, because obviously you're going from like. Because semi-pro footballers are not known really, obviously, in the country as much as, you know, obviously, the pro footballers. That's right. So you've gone from, obviously, playing that and then just absolutely smashing it. Can't walk anywhere being recognised. How do you deal with that as a young, a as lot, young guy? It was a lot. It wasn't just that, bro. It was not just about the being recognised. I come from a, a controversial group. You know, a lot of the boys come from the street. So, you, so your enemies yeah. follow you into what you're doing. Of course. Because there's a price of success, isn't it? Mm. And then... um. So it was that, it was also not having my freedom, obviously learning about the media side of it too. Like people are just trying to fuck me up from every angle. Yeah. You obviously get people that you thought was your friends, they're now changing around you. Because what happens when we get the position cards? We change apparently. Yeah, don't, apparently, don't yeah, apparently so. But it's actually fucking them that yeah, change. I'm still the same geezer. Yeah. You know? If you speak to like anyone that knows me now, all my shopkeepers in Battersea, would be like, that guy is still the same guy. Do you know what I mean? I'll still walk into Jay's shop in Battersea right now, pick up a Ribena and go, Jay, I'll pay, <laughs> I'll pay you in the week. Yeah, yeah. Jay's like, this boy's got money. He still pays me in the week. Six, he's like a 70p Ribena. <laughs> and that's what he loves about me. Yeah. Like, he doesn't change. Like, and I, if, if he acts the same, I've still got to treat him the same. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was everything, man. Like, you know, for your mental health, it was a lot. I became anxious, became paranoid, you know? Did you feel like everyone was out to get you? Yeah, 100%. And then, like, you know, and then obviously, obviously, my first girlfriend was a superstar too. So that made it double stress. Mm. You know, you don't trust people. You're finding out family members are selling stories on you. <laughs> I'm getting followed by, you know, one night I got followed. I was in the wrong area and I got followed by these cars, all these boys in hoodies. I can see they was, they was trying to set me up. Mm. Like, um, I'm confused as a youngster. I'm thinking, what do I do? I ain't going to die. So, so how old were you when you, when, they, when you released that song? 20 years old, bro. It's a young pup, so, twenty isn't it? years old, mm. and, and then you start worrying about your life, and then obviously I got stabbed at twenty when we went to Iron Apple. We had a twenty man brawl. And do you know what? Like you, people from the outside, and they're seeing you know a young kid, good looking guy, yeah, very different of what maybe other artists have been because it was like raw. The energy was crazy yeah, for more yeah. you guys, really. Because yeah. I remember I was in school at that point, Mad. and um, and so all the girls in my class class were like oh my god he's look how fit he is look at this yeah, look yeah. at this look you know what the usual shit and um to obviously go from as i say being a normal kind of person to then having all that stardom and having all this kind of, and then people are like perceiving oh my god he got the best life he's got this he got that yeah. but on the inside you're actually going through a fucking fucking so unhappy bro it's mad isn't it yeah like you know, you know. Um, On the outside, we look happy, but in the inside, they, you're miserable. Because you you've got all these people thinking, "Oh they, my god, he's the best why, thing since sliced bread." And that's right. That's why I respect your story. That's the reason why I, I. There's only certain people I come out for and do interviews for. I don't even do interviews no more because I respected your journey. Mm. See, is, is see people. What they do, they. I call people now. They're um. They're they're followers. So, prime example, like you're you're very outspoken in your social media. But like I said, so people go, "Oh, he's mad." But I know, I know. We know the same friends. Yeah. I know David Cottrell, he's a, he's a top bloke. But you just say things that people don't want to say. But anytime you address the truth, 
people want to call you mad, don't yeah. they? Do you understand? Because what it is, people don't like to hear the truth and they don't like like to know what's um, behind the smoke screen. And that's the, that's the fact of life. That's that's the way it's always and, been, and, isn't and it? And I know you've been through you've been through a lot of stuff with your mental health. I also followed the journey of your drinking when you had your tough times, but you was open and spoke about it. And how can I judge you when also my good friend Leon McKenzie went through the same same thing mm. as you too? Do you understand? Love Leon. You know, Leon's a legend. Yeah. And there's no mystery. I'm not saying it's like it's a mystery. As you see, this last week, Leon's put it on his social media, he's checked himself into rehab yeah. this week because life's just got a bit too much. Do you know what I love about that? Do you know what I mean? He got so much awareness about his about exactly. himself that to do that is fucking brave in it's itself. It's amazing. It's amazing. I called him last Wednesday and I said to him, you do whatever you have to do. And he said, champ, you just got a bit too much and I just need to address but me. But that's, ama that's yeah. amazing because whereas before it might have got on top but he's, he, he, knows, he knows what and he's about. And I said, about. I ain't judging I love you, bro. It. I said, I love you like a brother. Yeah. And he was just like, thanks for the call, champ, like this. I said, when you're ready and when you're finished, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Do you? Just... Why, why do you think that? Um, talking about like the rehab stuff, because when I checked into rehab, I was fucked. I had I lost yeah. it, lost everything. I was fucked, and um, people always think that when you go into rehab, it, they're the people who they're down and outs, and they lose everything. They got they got no money. Exactly. They they don't have no exactly. family around. They got the, no this and no that. Whereas exactly. in America, they do it on a regular basis. Exactly. And they're still coming films and stars. But in this culture that we have in the UK, it's kind of he's fucking down and out. He's probably weeing himself on a on a park bench yeah, somewhere. He fucked up his football yeah, career, but where's like all his money on yeah, gambling? Yeah, where's Leon is is like proved that he's he's just going to check into rehab to put himself on the right path again. That's right. I think that's amazing. It's brilliant because what people don't understand, like Leon's a very strong man, and um, he's also helped me a lot in my life. We've helped each other, but. I got why he went in there because he said he's not dealing with what's in his future. His future's good. Leon's done well. He's got a, a great yeah. documentary coming out. He's he, he's an advocate of mental health, what he does. He's saying there's certain things about his past that are still chomping him up. Yeah. You know, so got a lot of trauma. You know, past marriages, trauma, things that happened to him when he was a kid. Mm. That is his human right to go and sort himself of course, out. Of course he can. But the fuck would I laugh at my friend? Yeah, exactly. That's not funny. Mm. Do you understand? So I called him just to make him know, just know, yeah, you got people that care about you and do whatever you have to do to get yourself right. And well done to you. And don't ever feel like, and as you know, go and tell Leon that, mate, he'll knock you out too, because he's a trained professional boxer. <laughs> I know, I've fucking so, seen him. <laughs> I've seen him, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the hardest kids I've ever seen, mate. You know what I mean? Mate. Yeah, be on it. <laughs> mate, yeah, that guy can knock you out, no problem. But jokes aside, I just, I just rate him. I rate him for it. And yeah. do, do, um and you know like going back to obviously what you were going through in terms of like the anxiety at a, a young young age how long did it take you to get from like that stage of being twenty going through anxiety everyone wants a piece of you like most people when they come into like the the fame yeah how did you handle that and what got you through it football training because you know we're conditioned aren't we yeah so you know from eleven years old we've been doing twelve k twelve um. 12 minute runs, 5K runs, sprints, yeah. leap test. And as people know, like I'm a fitness fanatic, you know, I look after myself, I always have. That's why I can I, I can still play 90 minutes, no problem. And I can still play wing back because I can, I still Get think- Get about. Yeah, I still think of myself as a footballer. I still eat well. I don't drink in the week. Do you know what I mean? I only drink at weekends. I still condition myself. So what I learned, once I learned about all the emotions that I was going through, especially the trauma that I've been through, you know, um, things to do with, um, Growing up as a young man, all the women troubles that I've had, you know, when you've got kids with women that you're not with no more, all the culminations of things that's happened in your life, mm. things, places where you failed, whatever. And what I do, I just stop going to myself, well, I can't change the past. So fuck my past. That's good. And then when do I feel better? Prime example, if I'm, if I'm, things are getting on top, and my missus knows that I'm on one. Do you want my missus to go to me? I just go for a fucking run in the woods. Because <laughs> soon, as, soon as she I, knows. Because soon as I go running, and I do a 5K and I put my headphones in and I, I you know, you know, you lived in mm. the same area that I lived in Berkshire, beautiful mm. area, lovely, lovely scenic place. And I put my headphones in and then endorphins get around my head and the sweat comes from my body. It allows me to sort out all my problems in my head and it goes, well, it's actually not that bad. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So my things is running and training. You know what I mean? Go and hit a, go, I'll go yeah. and box, I'll go and hit a bag, go and do pad work. This, 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 I just know how to deal with that emotion when it gets on top and I had to let it out. Also, when I run, it makes me put things into boxes and understand things a bit more. So that's how I do with so it. So you have like amazing self-awareness, don't yeah, you, really, to like, do that? I'm a strong fucker, Cuts, man. Yeah. But not strong of me going, I'm... 
I've become strong from being weak. Yeah, of course. Do you understand? Yeah. As you know, it's a process. When you went into, you know, think of that day when you went into rehab, yeah? You was fucked. Oh, it's fucked. Yeah, it's everyone's horrible. going, it's David, David Cottrell's fucked up his football yeah. career. And, the, and you know, the evil cunts are laughing at you. Of course they are. Because people want you to fail. They want you to fail. But then you remember that rebuild of getting back to this person. Do you understand? Of getting back to that strong, the man that you knew you was. Mm. We're all human. We all have addictions. Mine was women. Do you understand? Like mine was drink and women. So and, yeah. You know what I mean? So bad culmination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's fucking the devil there, combination. There you go, and it's, and it's the devil. So um, I just always think of them, the moments of like, okay, I remember that dark place, but see life. One thing about life can talk about it, mm. but life's always gonna go forward. Yeah, exactly. Days. You've got to do it. It's always going to go forward. So. For me, yeah, just the rebuild. I just know what it is. I just I have self understanding of myself now. Yeah, so I'm nothing that bother me. No, but not bother me. I could get a call now and I'd be like, I hate when people call me. I'm like, do you know what happened? And I'd be like, you're making it like being more than more you're than what it is. Yeah, it. exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm like, people just know chill. me. <laughs> Don't ring my phone with no with none of your negative energy. Like, <laughs> do you know what I do? I just do this. I bore off. Like, <laughs> just like see you later. I got kids, man. I like I, I I apply all my energy to my kids and my wife, but I ain't got. I'm not interested in your bullshit. So what, you, when you were like a young kid, from the kid who was like involved in the gang game, yeah. and obviously you think you're tough at that age. You think every you like you know I've got a 14 year old son and they always think they know better and whatever else. Mm. So you thought you were all tough up to that age. Now when you were 20 and you're going through that phase, was that kind of like a a good vulnerability that you actually need in your life to think? Do you know what I'm actually fucking Read, not weak because you're not weak you're yeah. just being vulnerable right yeah. now which is obviously amazing strength that comes from being in that place of course so did you actually think do you know what I'm actually not as fucking tough as I thought I was did, of course you do especially when I got stabbed in my neck yeah <laughs> yeah of course it was fucking exactly and you just think fuck do you know what I mean? yeah, that was like it's... an arrow away from a flat line like That's I don't get any more real yeah, than that of course. Does it? so and then that lead, lead to a lot of things like was that a scary place to be in oh, it was, it, mate it was the worst like um, it was more than recovery like you go through three stages. So the first stage after getting stabbed is like, you're, you're fucking scared to go anywhere. You're scared, you're just scared because it's such a traumatic thing. Of course thing. it is, yeah. And then you go through the thing now where the second stage, that's the most dangerous one. Cause I didn't give a fuck mm. and I was ready to war That's anyone. the worst place. That was the worst. Not that I've been stabbed, but yeah, yeah. It's the worst, mate. Like I remember being in a club one day after I got stabbed, like about a year later and some guys were standing behind me, bro. Just, so I was, and I was, with, I was with firm too. So I just turned around and just switched on these boys. They didn't even do nothing, mate. They were just standing behind me. Yeah. But like, I must have felt a vision because I got stabbed from behind. The guy didn't come so to yeah, my face. Yeah, any little, yeah, exactly. Anywhere yeah. around So the now back, it was yeah. just like, then, then it's the next stage. Like who the fuck wants it? Let's go. Whatever it is, mm. it is. I don't give a shit. You want to go knives? You want to go guns? I'm game for anything. I don't fear fuck all. And then you get to the third stage of logic. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Yeah. And getting back to yourself and going, what the fuck was but I that's thinking? No, but that's normal, right? Yeah. What you're thinking. Of course it's going to be normal. Like, what am I doing? So, yeah, it's like addressing all these emotions inside of yourself and then moving forward. But I think self-learning is the biggest thing. Cool. Yeah, it's the As best. you know, I've just put on a, 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 an event Sunday just gone for Kai and Prince, the kid that got murdered. Yeah. I'm close friends with his dad. You know, I was so honoured, all the ex-pros, all your friends that came down and supported me, you know, um, and even sitting Did, with the father. Is that is that a video where I seen of a boy outside the, the ground and I think you were speaking to him saying, because he was getting bullied yeah, or something, so you I, said you can come to my event yes. anytime. And... So I invited that kid down. So mm. I, um, one of my PA found that this kid was getting bullied and he was a big So Solid fan. And um, we invited the whole family down. Oh, amazing. Yeah, because I, I, I hate bullies. I hate bullies. I hate them. That's what I say to the kid. Yeah. We bully the bullies because mm. it's the most lowest thing you can do. Pick on the weak. Pick on a kid that you know that's not going to fight back and while you're getting personal joy with your mates out of it, yeah. while you're fucking mocking him. Yeah. And you don't know the trauma that's caused into that kid. And you wonder why that kid goes home and cuts his wrist or just jumps in front of a train or whatever they do because you don't know the unhappiness and the darkness and the fear that you're bringing to this young person. It's evil. And you know, the bullies who are actually um, who are doing these things, they're the ones who've who've got real problems themselves because they're, right. they're not happy. They're not happy within, so they want to project it onto someone else. That's right. That's right. And I, it's just a. I love beating up a bully. I used to love beating up bullies back in the day. Yeah. Do you know what? When I used to be in school, I used to be, to be fair. I used to be fucking cool as fuck back in the day. Yeah. And because uh, obviously football, you you know, picked up by academy Still of ten. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. I, not anymore. Not as much anymore. <laughs> and uh, you're in school, and you got like all the kids that come into the classroom and whatever else, and 
I didn't like I didn't like the bullying side of things either because yeah, you know if you it. if you have a someone who's a little bit overweight or whatever you, you know you get people who are picking on people mm. and it's just not it's not right is it it's, you know when you go, you can it's go wrong f- on so it's many so, yeah, yeah. It's so like, wrong how you can go home and I'll get joy out of that and be like oh that was nice what I did it's crazy man I don't know yeah I don't understand it it just fucking blows my nut yeah. and and you got all these kids who are in these these gangs these days and they're waiting for one boy or two boys to be on their own but there's like ten of them. It is ludicrous, isn't it? But then you wouldn't have the fight one on one. Exactly. Because... And I've been in envir- environments, bro. I've been chased by like 15 geezers. You know what I mean? Like, I've been in the. It's mental. Good thing I could run. Good thing I was a winner. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you had a bit of pace. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. you fucked, wouldn't you? I was rapping, wasn't I? Do you know. Um, yeah, so. No one ain't catching me, man. And th- th- yeah, that's why you got out of it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I'd be dead from Do you know what? Like, that's what I always um, say to the teenagers that. You know, I I'm around, and obviously my son and and people like that, and and his friends, whatever it might be, and they always think that we'd know. Like my friends would, they they used to smoke weed, or they used to go yeah. and do what they need to do back in the day, uh, or go and drink. But my f- main focus is being a footballer. That's right. And I was so driven and so selfish. You have to be selfish of anyway. You do. Like people, I had one message on Instagram about a few months ago saying you're a selfish prick, you're this, you're that. I and. I was going to respond, but it was a kid who got actually released at a club that I was at. And I felt yeah. like respo- like the arsehole me would have responded and said, well, that's why you got released. Yeah. But the, you have to be selfish to succeed in certain... Of course fe- you do, man. You have to, man. Of course. Whereas, and, and I think that I didn't respond to it. I just fucking ignored it. But I just thought from that place, you, you have to have that selfishness. And, and it's, it's the same in any walk of life. You know, just because your friends are doing it doesn't mean you have to. There you go. Be there focused you, on what you're you doing. Like my mum, one thing my mum always taught me, and I thank her for, she was like, "Be a leader, not a follower." Mm. And you know, no matter what, I never forget it. One time we was on um, good thing about me, bro, you can't influence me on nothing, and you can't tell me what to do. And I've got some real bad boy friends that was living it. And I never forget one time we was young boys, and all the boys was going to carnival, and all, and, and the, the bus left from Clapham Junction, not in Hill Carnival. And this is all we're gonna do is buck other gangs when we get there. It's mm. gonna be drama. And all the, I, I remember the boys were getting on the bus. They said, Harves, you coming? I said, nah. I said, there's going to be pure drama there. Why are you not going there? So what, so yeah. at that particular, how old are you? 14? I'd probably say about 14, 15, For, yeah. So, so at that particular moment, are you actually thinking, well, what your mum's told you? Or are you actually thinking, nah, this, shit is not, this shit's not for I me? I just knew that I was going through a cauldron, bro. And why am I going to put myself in this environment? Do you understand? But that takes a lot of awareness yeah. at that age. Because all your mates didn't fuck you. All your mates didn't do it. And do you know how bizarre it is? Nine o'clock at night, yeah? One of my mates went and he, nine o'clock at night I'm still in Batsy he comes back here he's hysterical yeah, right, I put my little boy he's got stabbed in his back six times mad that isn't look it I would have been there yeah you would have been yeah. involved look at that you? couldn't believe it fuck. Like, fuck my life yeah, yeah. That's, that's mental yeah. isn't it so, so what so what advice would you give to like any because t- you've obviously been in the thick of it in London you don't get bigger than in the UK it's so in solid yeah, bro of course. <laughs> fuck, I know yeah fuck me and, I'll be uh, threatened by yeah, every gangster right, bro yeah, exactly. fuck yeah what's new so, so what, would, yeah. what advice would you give to like the teenagers or anyone who's on the wrong path right now and how they can switch it and change their lives because as you know sometimes when you're in that you don't know any different yeah so what, how can you shift that as a teenager think right I'm, do you know what I mean because when you're involved in that in the drug game as a kid yeah some of these fucking teenagers are earning more than their parents. So that's, that's, right. the, that's the problem. That's so, right. so how do you switch that thing? Right, I want to work a normal job and I want to, or I want to shift my energy to be like a CEO of some sort of companies because having that kind of chat with a kid who has got that mentality of thinking the drug game is the be all and end all because they make the more the most money. Yeah. For well, actual fact, they there's CEOs of companies who are making way more oh, and so on. So, so how do you shift that mentality to a teenager? So what I do is, like I say, prime example, yeah? Well, then look at So Solid. Look at us now, we're household names. Mm. We're respected for our struggle and what we've done. Um, look at the rapper Giggs, who came from it. He's a, another one, big selling artist, changed his whole life around. So there's no there's no excuse. If you wanna, what I say to you, if you think you're, you know, you're in the streets and you're smarter than everyone, yeah? This is what I say to people. Well, if El Chapo got caught, <laughs> anyway, and Pablo Escobar got killed, I'm sure you can get exactly. caught. Yeah, exactly. And these guys had the best intelligence and the best protection in the world. Yeah. They were top level gangsters. So what makes you invincible to think that you're smarter than everyone? But, but as a teenager, you do have that mentality, don't yeah, of you? Of course you do, because you think you're invincible. Mm. But I'm gonna. This is what I say. To, I said this to a. T- I done a, a, a talk at a jail one time, and the whole it was a young offenders, and they was all quiet. And I said, "You don't play computer games, innit?" And it's like, "Yeah." 
So you know, like we play Super Mario, you die and you get another life, don't you? Yeah. You get three lives. But you see when you get shot or stabbed, there's no comeback there's no from comeback. that. no comeback, no, Because you see this, God only gave us one. Mm. Where, see, me and you're sitting here now, our shells are right here, innit? Yeah. If we go out here and get stabbed now, that's it. Yeah, we're we done. Don't, we don't, like I said, Super Mario, we can have a top off of another yeah, life and exa- go again. Yeah, exactly. So I was, what I say to a kid, it's all fun and games until it becomes real. Mm. I have lied in my own blood. I have been stabbed in my neck with my jaw hanging out and my ear hanging off. Mm. Yeah, that is one of the most traumatic things. So I say to a kid, it's all fun and games until it becomes real. Yeah, exactly. So you continue living that life. But I'm saying to you, make sure you're prepared to go all the way. Because with drug dealing, with any form of criminality, comes enemies. Yeah. Do you understand? And you know how the drug game works? he's doing better than me. Mm. Then that drug dealer's firm want to come and get you. Yeah. And then they all robbing each other. And then it turns out that one's shooting that one, that one. And do you know what you think about it? It's all over fucking drugs. Yes, yeah, mad, isn't it? Like you're losing your life over yeah. drugs, you fucking idiot. Yes, yeah, mad. Do you understand? Mm. So what I'm going to say, so that's another scenario I say to a young kid. And then I say to a kid, I've been to jail. I went to jail in 2016 for driving. They sent me to Wormwood Scrubs. I was in there for 12 weeks. Do I say to a kid, okay, kill someone. My good friend from So Solid is doing 30 years for murdering someone. He's only done 15 years of 30 years. But, so everything that you like to do now, go to a nightclub, mm. walk out of here, have a nice yeah, drink, no, no, that shit. go to the nice bars, go to Marbella, shag birds. <laughs> that's finished Yeah. for 30 years. You're just in a room every day getting told when to eat, when to piss, yeah? So you carry on being bad, young boys, mm, mm. and you go out there and stab someone. and. If it goes wrong, you're, you're sitting. See this room that we're sitting in? And if these kids are watching it now, imagine being in this room and you can't leave it. Yeah. That would drive us nuts right now, and it cuts. It's mental, man. So there's, that's what I say to the young kids. You take all that on board. And it's down to them to take it down on board. Down to you, innit? Yeah, of course it is. It's, so if you, wanna, if you wanna play Gangstar 2022, mate, Good luck with it. <laughs> Good luck with it, pal. Just make sure it you doesn't got the end minerals. well, does it? It never doesn't, ends it well. It never ends well. I, I know, all the messages are in every film. All the films that we love, Goodfellas. Mm. How did that end? Yeah, exactly. Was, Radio R were... ended up ratting on poorly yeah. and all the boys. Who was his boys? That once it all got on top and they started losing families and money, they all start grasping on each other. Of course. That one kills that one. That one gets murdered. El Chapo got extradited. Pablo Escobar lost all his friends and ended up getting shot by the police. So give me the happy ending. Yeah, except there's none. There's never any, is there? Give me the happy ending. So do you think, so that's, do you know what I love? I just love the fact that you didn't get on that train at that age. It's mad. That's mad. That's a sign from someone. It's a sign, isn't it? I remember it. It was actually the 295 bus (laughs) from Clapham Junction to Labrook Grove. And obviously, you know, Labrook Grove where Carnival is. And I just knew, man. I knew. That's fucking And you know great. them days, yeah? Tasers was in. Tasers became yeah. big. And all the boys used to get all the tasers. So like, a couple of my mates got tasered. I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck's going on here? Stabbed uh, and tasered. Yeah, I'm you like, don't need double both. <laughs> double <of> that. <laughs> I'm all right, thanks. Double whammy going on. And do you know what? Where was I? Ones with Common. With my Liverpool kit on. With the candy. Remember candy yeah, Liverpool love kit? Liverpool, don't you? Yeah. You love Liverpool. I was there, mate. Running up on Ones of Common. Not getting stabbed. Playing football. That's no, nah, that's amazing. There you've you done go. Why well, you lot are coming back in A and E? Do you know? Um, going back to your the early so solid crew days. Yeah. Um. So, did you feel that when you said when you mentioned just now about when people become famous and in the limelight that they always say you've changed? Mm. And I remember what Jay Z says something as well, where he says something along these lines, not word for word. He says. Fuck it, I didn't I didn't work this hard all my life. To stay the same. To stay the same. <laughs> I love that line. It's amazing. Yeah. And I just think he's so right because he took himself out of the hood. He took him obviously probably not I don't know his story too much. He probably wasn't getting fed too much and, and whatever else with, with the hood that he was in, like starving kids That's around right. that area. Um and obviously he's he's on top right now. So why Why would you go through all that traumatic time, all that hard work, be that talented just to be the same and have well, the same? Well, there you go. What's the point? And the thing is, that's what I... They use it as change, like, we're big time. Mm. And we're, we're... I fucking hate that And line. we think we're it. 
I That's the change that. they're yeah. on about. The change Jay Z on is about is changing yourself for the fucking better. better. Yeah, of course. My kids live in Berkshire. They're mm. not growing up how I grew up. Yeah. Why well, don't want to worry about my son and that guy outside? Why if my son's gonna get stabbed or? Mm. Do you understand? So, damn right, Jay Z. We changed for the better. Why the hell am I gonna go to a trap house? Yeah. Now or <laughs> and endanger myself knowing that I'm a target? Yeah, of course. Like, of course I'm gonna change. I gotta change my lifestyle. I gotta change the things I do. I've also got to um, understand that I'm, regardless, I am in the public eye, whether I like it or not. Yeah. So, even today, I'm on a tube. I'm on a tube, a train. Like, people can't, like, fuck, like, they get on a train, like, what the fuck? So I'm just talking to Welsh people on a train, like, you know what, mate? <laughs> like, they just see me humbly just sitting in my headphones, you yeah. know, just doing my work. <laughs> like, it's the best way, yeah. You know what I mean? And, but, I'm a people's person, Cots, you know, do you know what yeah, I mean? That's why it. me and you get on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you said, so, you got to change for the right reasons. But don't try and do that change in like, which we always hear in football, you're big time. Yeah, I fucking I hate that quote. I hate that and then, quote. Um, and don't you hate this when, when someone goes, you don't call me no more. Yeah. I'll oh, fuck off. You didn't call me. Didn't, they, <laughs> I mate, always say that. Off. When, pe- I mean? when people always say, oh, I've not heard off you for a while. Well, you haven't fucking well, you um, heard off me you. then. And no is, that, is that because apparently I'm sitting on my feather bed yeah. with girls fanning me. Yeah, exactly. And I've changed, yeah. And fucking having orgies every day. Because exactly. that's what you lot probably think I'm living every day. They it? always think that, don't I still got to fucking pay bills. I still mm. got to wake up to reality. I still got to change shitty nappies. Like, what? Just because I live what? in a better house. Do you know so what, like, I, do you know what I found crazy? Is that when I retired from football, is that people who were kind of leeching off me anyway and having free holidays and free this and free that. Yeah. Or going having like free nights out with me fucking spending their fucking, like me sorting their free night out. Um, sure? Don't hear off them ever again. Never. And then the people that you, who wouldn't speak to you before because they thought you were a fucking asshole and big time. They then end up speaking to you it's then weird, because because you've retired from football, you're not in the public eye yeah, anymore. They weird, feel like it? they can actually speak yeah, to you now. Weird. I don't understand that. I want to talk to you when you're up, you know, Birmingham yeah. City. But when that, you're down, it's yeah, it's all like, oh, other, all other great great clubs you've played yeah. for. Like, cause what you got to understand, you said like you said it today before even the interview. Football and music works hand in hand. Mm. Now you got to understand when I was touring and I was in all these hotels and I'm waiting to go on stage and I'm traveling the world. Who the fuck do you think I'm watching? Yeah, because I love football. Yeah, I'm watching all you lot. You know what I mean? It's, it, that's what, and it's always the same because, I, and that's why footballers get in trouble. Like most, like quite a lot of my friends were in in the drug game when I used to go out or whatever. Yeah. And people always think, well, if if he's going out with them, then he's doing it or he's involved. Exactly. Or whatever. But it's not like if you're from the streets. It's just your friends that you've grown up with. They're your friends that you've grown up with. Like I can go out with the fuck I want. Yeah. So that's why I always say to people. And when I checked into rehab, um, maybe I was just fucking oblivious. I've, I've told this story a million times. Yeah. But, when I checked into rehab, the, the counselor said to me there, you're the only footballer who's checked into rehab is just in here for drink. Because normally they come in with drink and cocaine. That's and I was right. Like, what? Isn't it mad? And I was thinking, I've never fucking seen any of my yeah, teammates yeah. or do that. Because well, it's the quickest drug to come out of your system. And I just thought, whoa. Yeah, so you would never see it. Yeah. Half of the fucking football league are doing coke, bro. It's mad. Do you know what I mean? Because they knew it was, like, it's a bit more worse because, you know, you do weed. Weed stays it stays dormant yeah. in your body for ages. Yeah, so crazy. football ain't going to smoke weed. Like, when the footballer for um, Tottenham who got caught for weed, what's his name? Dean... Oh, no, it's his name, man. The centre forward, Chris Armstrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, bro, weed. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, it made me laugh. I was like, you must have just wanted a spliff and said, fuck yeah, my career. Yeah, just fuck it, yeah. Because you know that's going to wind. You're getting drug squad coming. You're getting caught for that. It's getting caught. But the, ri- the worst drug, the class A one, the worst actual drug is the one that comes out your system the quickest. Mm. And that's why you used to find NBA players, NFL players, footballers. That's the drug they was taking. And that is what your the rehab woman was pertaining to. Like... Mate, you're all right. We just... Do you know what? In my fucking, in my, I still yeah. have that self awareness. I used to just think, well, if the manager or the coaching staff like fucking smell drink on me, I'm not gonna fail a drug test. Yeah. But do you know what? I used to hate it by the drug test. I used to call them Willy Watches when he yeah, used to come in. Yeah, I hate it, bro. Fuck, I, I hate I, it. I, the, the way they, they wait for you, innit? They, they, they wait for you. You go into like a little toilet. I know. You've got to turn on the side so they can see your dick. And give you a bottle Sh- of water. Yeah, shorts down to your pants. I know. And if it doesn't fill up, if you get a stage fright or whatever and you have mushroom dick, you go, I, <laughs> bro, I hate <laughs> it. It goes like, me all the time, going, mate. Oh, fuck. Am I trying to get a fucking hard enough for like a drug squad geezer? Geezer watching me floppy dropping in the cup. And I always say, hey, at fucking Barney, yeah? Did, have you seen the footage of Paul Pogba? When they got, when, um, so he gets. Because his brother played non league, didn't he? Yeah, so yeah. No, no, Paul Pogba gets pulled by the drug squad, okay. squad after like a Man United game, yeah? I'm going to send you the clip, and Paul Pogba, Paul Pogba goes, again! <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though, he just gets pulled all again. the time. Got like, I don't know, this, I, and they used to go to us, we did used to laugh, we used to go, 
My man used to be like, it's done randomly. So why is it at Barnet only me and Aaron from Tottenham? I'm from South London and he's from Tottenham. Yeah. The two black Same boys, ones. we always get tested. Fuck off. You, do you know what I was now? I used to get called in all... When I was, yeah. at, Birmingham, when I was at Birmingham and we were called in all the time because I was... Um, Wales were doing quite well then. I don't know. I wasn't fucking playing all the time, but yeah. I was doing all right. And then... But every time we used to go away. And then when we, was, when we were away with um, at the Euros with Wales, they'd obviously do the random checks and me and a couple of the other boys... Um, got pulled in and it just kind of takes the fun out of it yeah of course because I just think that you should be celebrating with your with your mates you've just had like a great achievement you've won a match or you wherever like, just come like, to the hotel like, or like, something just, yeah like, just like and they just pull you straight exactly. off the pitch and, 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 and like, bro fuck. it was the fucking Euros bro yeah, I know. Wales don't get to major tournaments I know, it's all a the joke. time so they had to leave because we got to understand this like do you know what I always like gospel truth? What you remind me of every time I look at you, it's hilarious to me, right? Because I love my I love my accumulators. Yeah. Yeah. And I always I always used to call you, you used to love an early kickoff goal. Do you remember like <laughs> like every time I used to like because obviously before I, when I used to be on the way to games, yeah. Because people forget that I went back to FC Wimbledon when I was 26. I was playing for Wimbledon when I was in So Solid. That's mad that. People isn't forget it? that. I was playing in the conference. Did you feel like that people just want to smash you even more then? Yeah, they did. Of course they fucking I, did. But I wait, what was good about it, I always played in the teams that was top. We used to battle yeah, so you'd be the right, pop So it. the glory was just and I played for Wimbledon, bro. But I remember like, you know, like if you got a if you got to be at the ground at 130, yeah. Like, and you played at Birmingham at the time, or who was the Welsh team? You played was it you played, Swansea. Swansea, when yeah. you got Swansea. And they always used to love an early kickoff in Wales, didn't they? Yeah, always. And I remember always like sitting in a bar when you were at City. Always, you always used to score an early kickoffs, <laughs> like Cockrell. Do you know what? With yeah, with like, with um, I always, I always remember. I used to love playing at Swansea because we all, we always used to score quite early anyway. We were, like fucking pass the ball to that. It was like good like culture there. We like just fucking smashed it. And like Bir and Birmingham when I was there, we had a few and early kickoffs. You used kickoffs. Routledge and Dyer, weren't you? Uh, yeah, of course, man. And then uh, yeah. Scott Sinclair, they was always fucking. Uh, all the they boys. always used to score them boys. Yeah. Um, that's fucking mad. Do you know what? That, I felt like that when I started playing semi-pro I felt like people wanted to target you a bit more yeah, of course they, they're called big time and the referee wants to send you off or they want to give you yellow cards just because I can bro I remember the first time do you remember John Robertson yeah that was at um, Charlton yeah back in the day yeah so like at the time I'm at I think Wimbledon and he's signed for Eastbourne or someone right and someone's gone John Robertson's come down and he plays right wing I'm playing left back oh bro the first five minutes <laughs> You smashed it. Like, he thinks he's fucking good. Yeah, he's cool shot. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta let people. You gotta let people know. And that's me. I, yeah. I love a tackle too. Do, do you know what I mean? Oh, I love a tackle. Me, got <laughs> Yeah, I love a tackle. I, I even smashed someone this Sunday. Yeah, I love a tackle. Do you know what? That's what with these with these charity games and stuff. I was playing um, one about two months ago, and. Um, to be fair, I fucking bossed it. I played centre midfield. I scored from the halfway line. I scored a free kick. Just put it top bins. Yep. And even the referee said to me, he was like, that's different of what I like. I normally see your technique looks different or whatever. And um, anyway, this this young centre back, he must have been about 18, 19. I told you downstairs. He passed the ball. No, he booted the ball away and gave it away. And I said, look, you should have just given it to me. Yeah. And he turned around. He goes, chill out. It's only a charity game. And I just thought, fuck, this is the reason why you're not a pro and you're not taking on board. It doesn't, board. Work, like, it doesn't that, work. Like, you need this, like, no disrespect, but the level you're at, that's why. Because if you've got someone on who's, like, senior to you and they've been there, seen it, done it, and they're giving you advice, fucking listen. Instead, they just, like, chat back. Whereas, like, my winning mentality was, I'm fucking still winning this charity exactly game. I don't give a that. shit. Like, Marcus Gale is the manager manager of my Team Harvey team, right? Yeah. And Marcus always goes, see if Harvey, this guy's achieved so much, but Harvey, he goes, that guy calls me uncle. When I talk football, I listen. Because he's done it. He's done it, yeah. He's done it. Mm. You know, when Danny came to my dressing room Sunday, the boys was like, even the boys like, yeah, we've all played in like champ and did it. But this bro, this boy's won a Premier League yeah, four prem. years ago. It's mad that. And he was the most humblest kid kid in the dressing room, just chilling, talking to all the yeah, boys. He's a nice guy. Couldn't do enough for everyone. You know what that what Danny's mm. like. So for me, Cots is like, remember I tried to recruit you for the West Ham game last yeah. year, but you was at Barry. Yeah. Do you remember? Okay, they wouldn't let me play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They wouldn't, yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let, let you play. play. I can play now. I'm ready when you are. The Brighton game I'm ready when you are. They see you, they're going to shit themselves. <laughs> people hate my team anyway because it's full of all ledges, all your mates, isn't it? <laughs> so they're like... We're going to be popping it. Yeah, we're, we pop for fun. And, um, and I, I just come from, just like yourself, why I like people like you, why you stick out? Because I like ball players. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I love ball players. I like people that keep hold of the ball. Do you know what I mean? And do something with a ball. I hate them old school. Like meatheads. Turn them. <laughs> you know, and you know, you've played in, the, in all the divisions. You know, say for example, when you go like, you're playing in the champ and I don't know, at the time you have to go to like Barnes and mm. you're away, you're like, fuck off. Yeah. Do you know what? I, yeah. I, I actually played there. Um, I signed there quickly yeah. after after Swansea. So when I finished at Swansea, I was about 23, 
22, 23. Yeah. And I fucking hated football at that point. I wasn't playing. I was made to train on my own uh, when Brendan Rodgers was the manager with like oh, maybe some of the UFC, all yeah. that fucking shit, yeah. And I was a young kid still then. And um, so I was made to train. And to be fair, Brendan was good. It, Brendan was the best trainer good I've ever. Coach, Brendan, Amazing. Yeah. And he's a good guy as well. He was just Lovely like, band. maybe what I needed that he's time. Manager, he's got, like, yeah, the, like, he's so sick. Like that, his, yeah. um, his training was the best I've ever seen. He was always like fucking organized. He was like very quick and wanted yeah. to play the ball. And so anyway, maybe that was what I needed that time. But I then went to Barnsley after it. And I, just want, I was thinking about retiring at that age. Yeah. I fucking hated football. So I went to Barnsley. I had a manager there, Keith Hill and his assistant. And they were on my shit. To a new, like, they were like, oh, you're big time, you're this, you're this and that. And they just didn't manage me well. And I fucking hated my time there. And that's what I hate. I hate that's it. what I hate, man. Like, even what they're saying to you, you know, that's what I said. See, football, I always say the key thing about football, yeah, the ability plays a big part, but a lot of it, yeah, is the luck of having a good manager. Mm. You know, yeah. you get boys, they can go and play for the wrong manager, and it just doesn't. You, how many clubs have you seen it when a the player's there? And then they don't play, and then a new manager comes in, and they start playing regularly it's, again. It's and mad, you're like, isn't it? what? Yeah, the... Because mad. the whole, the you know, the backroom staff change. That manager might rate that ability, and then you get another one who's just got it in for you. Yeah. And the thing is, I'm saying like, okay, so you're coming in now. You like, example, you come towards the end of the career. You're not in a good place. You go to Barnsley and look at the information they're saying to you. Yeah, I know. That's nothing to even just, do with football. It's mad. All you're trying to do is just dissect David Cat David Cotterall's character yeah. and make him feel shit because. Let's be honest with you. Give the geezer some respect. The geezer's played 400 fucking games and he's mm. had a good career. Yeah. yeah, and he ain't struggled to score goals, <laughs> you prick. So, don't... Let's, but come you on, know mate. what? I felt like... Yeah. When I was part-time as well, I felt like... I don't know. Maybe because I had better careers than the managers who managed me. Yeah. I felt like they felt a little bit threatened. Yes. And so they'd ask me for advice. I'd give it. And they wouldn't take it on board. Yeah. And I would say, look, keep doing the same things. Not them in individuals. I mean, us as a collective group. Yeah. Me and myself included. And I used to say, look, we keep doing the same things. We're going to get the same results. And then they'd, they'd use my quotes and then nothing would fucking yeah. materialize and do anything Fuckers. about it. So that's just the way of the world. Who's the but best manager you played for? I'd love to know that. Gary Rowett is my best yeah, manager. Yeah, see, Gary Rowett would Just purely... But he was a player, Gary Rowett, though, Do you know it? what? Just purely... Beca- Birmingham? Birmingham, yeah. yeah. Do you know why? Just purely because... He knew I was a fucking loose cannon. He knew I loved birds. He knew I loved going out. But he knew I would produce it on a pitch. Yes. And I remember him. I went to see a just... I told this story, obviously. I've only got one story. I hate saying that. We've only got one story to tell. But, like, I went to see a Justin Bieber concert on a Friday. I'd never go out before I get a day of a game. Yeah. Used to. And, um, anyway, so I was there. And Troy Deeney's messaged me. He said, Crazy, what? right? He said, what have you got in your glass there? I said, oh, just apple juice. He said, no way have you fucking bought a pint of, pint of apple juice there. <laughs> So anyway, he said, and he sends me a picture of him and Gary Rowett in a box. I'm like, fuck. So I was thinking to myself, fuck it now. I might as well get on it. I'm on it already. I might as well just get absolutely fuck. I just might as well have a few so more beers. Just cracked on. Just cracked on. <laughs> so anyway, next day I'm, I'm excited. He's, he's getting gaffers. Gaffer see me. So fucking brilliant. So the next day he's um, coming, put the board up as he normally does. I'm thinking, fuck it. I'm on the I'm on the Judy <laughs> Judy today. I'm not expecting to play. Anyway, I've started because we won the previous game. He goes, oh, I'm just going to play with the same starting 11 today. And he's just looked at me and said, you, you fuck, I'll see you Monday morning. I thought, oh, fuck. So anyway, we go out. I think I've scored one and set up two. We win like 4-2. So I'm fucking buzzing. I think he's got, got me away with it. Monday morning, he sees me and he said, oh, it's a good job we um, won. Anyway, he said, oh, did you have a good weekend at Justin Bieber's concert? So he just let it slip because we won. But if we hadn't, you'd have fucking you'd grilled me. Yeah, you'd have grilled me. Um, I think we've done the same for Ants Ferguson to Ryan Giggs and Lee Sharp, didn't he? Yeah, he when he went over to his yeah. birds in their ass and all that. <laughs> and, then said, and then said to the players to see Bruce, if they stop running, yeah, like, and they're all fucking intoxicated and fucked, didn't it? And you made them play. You made them play, yeah. Like, <laughs> fuck it, it's, it's madness, isn't it? It's crazy. That is unbelievable. Do you know what? Right, going back to you because obviously it's about you right now um when you you obviously had a high profile like celebrity kind of relationship mm-hmm. how was that how was that f- like for you personally in terms of like being in the limelight mm. got all this added pressure did you sense that people wanted you to fail even more yeah because now media you, media being one of them of course they do because you've got to think to yourself first and foremost black people didn't have a, a, a iconic black couple to look at so you got to look at how maybe you look at like Beyonce and Jay-Z. Mm. So you got to, you think, you know, me and Alicia together are both, both successful in what we do. Yeah, both smashing it. Uh, but yeah, again, yin and yang, isn't it, of mm. life? So people are going to be jealous. Guys are going to be jealous. 
you know what I mean? It's more it's more when, when you need to find out that like, guys are jealous because you got that girl. You know <laughs> what I mean? But bro, I've been getting girls from day, bro. Like, you, but now it's heightened because you got a girl that's in the public eye. Yeah. Do you understand? So it was this like double whammy, double pressure. So it was more like, and then women became worse because women want to destroy what you have. Mm. So when women see you happy with another woman, they don't like that shit. They don't like it. <laughs> so they would go out their way just to try and get one up on that other woman. And so obviously for me, it was mad like because temptation was rife. You're both successful people. And the more you're happy, the more girls want to throw themselves at you, didn't mm. they? So there was loads of anger you had to watch out for. You had to watch out for the jealous guys that wish they was in your shoes. You watch out for the women that want to just try and get a fuck you just to get a story on you. Um, then you both, you both, within this, you both got to try and find some form of normality. That's why we would always go away to America or, you know. Yeah, because you're not recognised as much over there. They're chilled out there. Yeah, just where we're just normal. So most of at that time when it really got intense for me and Alicia, most of, you know, everything was just spending fortunes on fucking private holidays. Just to get away. Just to get away and just be around normal people. It was a lot of pressure cuts, man. Like, and then naturally knowing that, I'll tell you an incident, right? I was in Plymouth. Imagine this one time. I'd done a gig in Plymouth. A gig. I go back to these to these girls' houses with the boys. But imagine I'm not doing nothing. I'm just having a drink. Like, I'm stupid. I'm aware of my situation. Everyone knows fucking who I'm with. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on the sofa um, having a drink and I fall asleep on the sofa. Yeah. As I, as I do it, yeah, one of my mates wakes me up. Wait, 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 wait. Wake up, wake up. What? Because, bro, you know this girl? Yeah, as you've been sleeping, has been trying to get your phone. Trying to get into your phone. Shh. And she was going to her mate in the kitchen. And he nabbed them. So he switched, got my phone off them. And he's going, get, find his girl's number. Text his wife. Text his wife. Why? What the fuck is going all on? Or my girlfriend, or before he was married or whatever it was. So they were trying to say, oh, he's, he's with all girls and make up whatever shit. And they were trying to find my, find my phone. And like, oh, find, her, find her name. Because they that's, knew my... It's Alicia, in it? That's and mad, my isn't mate. It? Fucking save Yeah, like he saved you. And my mate was like, but that makes it worse. The fact you're not even doing nothing. You just come back to the house. Can't even like, do anything just, wrong. I was just getting on it. Do you know what? I laugh. Say, when you were saying that then, just bringing back memories for, for me, when I was with um, my ex, and um, I can't remember who I was playing for. It might have been like Doncaster or something. Yeah. And I was on the way back from a game, and um, yeah, it was a late one like fucking far I was like do you know when those late ones you're only back on the coach again about 2am yeah, well, in fact it wasn't even that late I got back about yeah, I actually got back about 11ish actually yeah. it wasn't even that late and um, so anyway I come in she's on the phone to someone and some girl was saying that I was in Cardiff kissing some other girl in the nightclub and she turned around and said well why has he just walked in his football tracksuit and just come from the game like Devils. come from work yeah and it's just like fuck the, and, and the lies that people can make up in it so mm -hmm. when um do you know, like with the media kind of things, where they're out to to get you? Yeah. Um, not you personally. I mean, in in general, like people who are in the public eye. Do you think that with some of the stuff that is going on in the world right now, i.e., child trafficking, sexually, yeah, all a lot of paedophiles and and so on, who are, you know, to do with the Epstein kind of stuff? Yeah. Um, why do you feel, from your point of view, that we're not pushing that agenda more than like selling stories on someone who's cheating on their wife or or someone who's in the public eye when this is real shit who is that is affecting people? Why are the media not doing that? Do you think? Because most of the people that are the devils are actually the people running. Who own it? it? Of course they do. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. So everyone that you told us, like I said, that are iconic people, you know, look at this person. Yeah. Look at Harvey Weinstein. Mm. Look at the things that he was doing to female female mm. actors. Look at look at the abuse of power. Look at the Jeffrey Epstein incident. Look at that pro that um, program on Netflix, The Pedophile Hunter. Yeah, that was disturbing to say these are people that live amongst us. Mm. You know, saying things like you know that what they're going to do to eleven year old kids. And like I said, a lot of these people that are in power. Look at the corruption. What happened happened with um you know the Max Clifford incidents. All these things. These are the people. Remember they say back in the day, if you get in trouble, go and see Max Clifford. Yeah, yeah. But so what it is. The people that are actually orchestrating all this devilism, yeah, are actually the ones the behind one of the, it. Yeah, of course they are. And that is why. Yeah. And that's what I said, because it's a smoke screen. Do you know what I mean? We, we will never know who's in power. Do you understand? We will never know who's really controlling these rooms. But just know, I know, as you know, there's some devil behind it. Yeah. Do you understand? Because when you look at the Epstein thing, I, when I watched it, I was like this. Me and my I was like, this is ridiculous. Mm. 
this is this man is basically a professional groomer of young girls. Do you know what? And then, and then talking about the stuff, I don't really watch much on TV. To be yeah. quite honest, I don't have no. Um, I don't watch no news. I watch. You know the it's occasional, so yeah. Really I, I watch the occasional like thing on Netflix, like Afterlife, and I love Ricky yeah. Gervais, etc. Yeah, Sports News. Yeah, so, <laughs> so 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 I don't really watch any of that shit. So mm. when I watched, I did watch the um, ah, oh, fuck, the Jimmy Savile documentary. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just thinking, from the outsider, it's not fucking rocket science, and they're promoting this guy, and it's just blatant to see. Like all the youngsters who would watch this now thinking, how fucking stupid are you lot to not even see that it's he was up to like, this stuff? It's, it's ridiculous. And I just think, like, how is, how is this even it's happening? It's ridiculous. And, uh, and then you have to think, you know, that with the like with the Prince Andrew thing of late, yeah. you don't pay t- someone £12 million unless you've done something wrong. Well, there you go. £12 million. £12 million. <laughs> when I seen that, and, I, and, and like I said, yet again, he paid £12 million. But I tell you what, we just bury it under yeah, the carpet. But, yeah. but like I said, little things like you're more focused on, like I said, this ain't for example, exposing someone in entertainment for something stupid. It might be an affair. Yeah. It might nothing detrimental that's gonna make you go, that person's a real horrible, mm. nasty person. Yeah. They just you know, they've just done wrong. But the real truth of what is actually going on and the devilism of what's going on in this world, no one wants to expose. Cots, let me break it down to you now, and I'll say this to you over your microphone, yeah? What they do to you, they try to demonize you for talking the truth about the demons. Yeah. That's why I laugh when I go on your story. Because you're talking the truth. Yeah. And what it is, but remember, you do know, you can go on Instagram right now, you could go, by the way, it's a lovely day and the sky is blue. And someone could be like, why did you say the sky is blue? <laughs> you prick. Yeah. You're out of order. Yeah. So with you. That's what we're living in right that's now. That's what I said. What I say to you sometimes, I laugh. I, I, like, I can literally go on your finger and go, Cots, you're not going to win, mate. <laughs> Because what it is, you're talking the apps. If someone, if half of my friends go in your story, they'd be like, he's talking the truth, though. Mm. Yeah, but these sheltered, brainwashed people that's why I call it brainwashed Britain. Yeah. And now I call it a brainwashed world. Yeah. All they want to do, like you said the other day, when you've had incidents where you might be, you know, talking about another incident, but they're going to make up whatever they want to make up in their head. Yeah. Oh, he's talking about the guys that run in and shot people. Yeah. No, he's not. Yeah. Listen to what he's actually saying. Do you know what? It's you quite... want him to be chatting about that just so you can so put you him in the paper up, yeah. and say, ex-footballer has gone mental and we should section him And because he's for kids getting shot in schools. If David Cotterall was for kids getting shot in schools, I wouldn't be sitting in this yeah. room. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut do, the fuck do up. Do you know what? When, do you know what I mean? When I actually, um, when I actually put that, that thing out, because I didn't actually put it out about, obviously, the, the tragic thing that happened in the in the st- in the US. I mean, exactly where um, he was coming from. And what I was saying was is that kind of like you have stage actors to do with what was going on with the the fucking the COVID situation and so on. Yeah. And people always think that every, a lot of stuff goes on in the US, right? There's always shooting, there's always something going on and people innocent people are losing their lives. So my I just put that quote out and I didn't actually know that the shooting was going on. So of course people are gonna say they're yes, link yes you that. fucking did. Do you know what? Yeah. It's just your timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, yeah, yes, you fucking did. Is what, the, is what they said. And yeah. do you know what? Like, I actually seen my dad, and my dad said to me, oh, it's awful. Have you seen that shooting in the in the US? Yeah. And I thought, no, I haven't. Yeah. And then I got back to my phone, and then I got all like these newspaper articles saying, do you want to comment? We're going to release a story. We're going to do this and do that. And I actually voice noted one, one back because um, I've dealt with him before. Yeah. And I thought, fuck it. I'll, I'll do it. And I just said to him, I actually didn't even know. And blah, blah. blah. It makes no difference because they're still gonna fucking run the story to make you to portray it. They're they're selling papers, bro. And this, they they don't care about your mindset. Of course, they they just want to link it to that. That e saying this, and I sat there and I thought, you people are all nuts, man. Like with you, you're such a brave heart, right? Like naturally, remember a person. You might be the agent, be like, cots, ease it down, ease it down, ease it down for what? uh, Are these guys easing it down when they when they're grooming girls? Exactly. Are these guys easing it down? Yeah, when they when they um, paying paying people twelve million pounds to keep quiet for the disgusting skullduggery that you done. So why the fuck should we ease it down? And do you know what? I seen something the other day. uh, I mean, Archbishop. People um, are crazy. I don't know his I don't know his name. I I actually commented on Twitter, and he said um, Prince Andrew is going to be making amends. But if you make an amends, it means you've done something in the past. That's correct. To make the fucking right and why is decision. Why he been prosecuted for what he's, he's done? A, well, he's not obviously one of us. But with uh, and no disrespect, 
the church, the churches around the world don't have the fucking best reputation anyway because they've they've had a lot of grooming to do with kids anyway. Grooming, so just, um, paedophilia. Yeah, exactly. It's that. the truth though. Mm, yeah, it, we can all sit here and put on smoke screens. And what I say to anything, yeah. Like, just be open-minded. No, you can't sit around and go, the whole church system yeah. has paedophiles. No, exactly. Of course, We're you got, not saying that. You got, yeah. But within that organisation, a lot of us has come to the forefront yeah. of what was happening to young children. Mm. So you need to address these things. Because if you're all about the kids of the future and we've got to protect our kids, well, surely that starts from the highest level, right? It's a fucking double-edged sword, so, Cots, man. And do you know, do you know with... It's um, a double-edged sword, man. They, 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 we keep... we As, as a society... Was as um us as a, a society, sorry, um, of course. What happened to Ukraine, right, is fucking tragic. This yeah. is what happens, right? People lose lose their lives. Innocent people lose their lives, their homes, their livelihood, or whatever. We're not saying we're not saying that. What I was getting at is that you know Syria, Yemen, and all these countries yeah. have been in war and have been victimized for so many years. For- Decades for decades, yeah, for decades, for a long period decades. of time. And I seen a woman the other day; she got kicked in her face just because, um, you know, the, the color of the, her skin or uh, you know her beliefs or whatever yeah. it might be. It's fucking, it's disgusting. There you go. And and um, so anyway, I've commented on that and I got abused for it, saying yeah. who gives a fuck anyway. And I thought, well, we should give a fuck because a human being has just got kicked in the face. Well, there you go. So, but my point is that you got all these countries have been at war, and you know all these. I think Graham Sunas come out and said Ukraine should just qualify anyway because what happened to Ukraine. Yeah. But if you're going to do that for Ukraine, what about all the other countries beforehand? It's the truth, though, bro. It's the truth. And, it, and that have been under the same trauma. And it's the same thing, exactly. yeah. yeah. And so and so, you know, you go on your online banking. It's kind of like donate to Ukraine. Okay. Well, what about the, again? What about the other countries too? Yeah. And but the the thing is, what I don't get is that you got all these homeless people and and people are on the streets the the homelessness of of younger kids mm. are going through the roof right now where it's just it's getting worse and worse and we're putting taxes up we're putting now, petrol up we're putting this up we're putting oh, come on, we so know this setup, we're, 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 we're putting this it's the biggest setup so, known to man and then you got the jubilee weekend of what's going on and i just think you're spending so much money on that why the fuck are you not helping the homeless bro let me tell you something right now yeah there'll be no union jacks in my house bro <laughs> yeah? Like all I'm enjoying, yeah, is the extra day off. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's it, man. That's where they get a lot of people, right? Oh, yeah, fuck. Cool. My my son's just. Uh, we just paid a twelve million pound thing to to sort him out. What he's been doing, um, grooming or whatever that is. Yeah. And we're just brushing the cup, but we'll give you an extra day off. Yeah, there you and go. there's so many people think, oh my god, we go give oh, you an extra brilliant. day off. Oh my god! Brilliant! I don't understand it. I'm self-employed anyway. I take a day off when I want. Unless I'm under contract. <laughs> exactly. <'Cause laughs> like I do. am now. So it just, it's just, it, it, bro. You're so on point. Like that's why, like I said to you, we, I see through the smoke screen. Like I said, I can look at people. Can people to see this, don't they? Mm. But it's what's beyond that's, that. Yeah, exactly. That. To understand. And like I said to you, for you to have these this thought process and say the things you do, I said, you see, I said, this is quite enlightening for me because I'm going. Well, he actually ain't your typical dumbass footballer, mm. as they stereotype footballers as. You know, if they finish football, they got no intelligence. But you know what, they right? No... They fucking make me out to. Yeah. <laughs> they make me. Out... I'm a bit fucking nuts, but they make. Oh, me... you're nuts. But yeah, I love I'm nuts. It. But I've. Yeah. But like, the thing is, is that we want to speak about real things, and they're they're real things. But when you when you're talking about things, I've had I've had like ex teammates. I've had you know people messaging me saying I've had to unfollow you because um, some of the shit that you're talking about to do with the the Jeffrey Epstein stuff at the, at that time I was talking about and some other stuff. And I just thought you have children. Why the fuck do you not want to know yeah. about all this trafficking that's going on, like with the young groom and etc. It's normal stuff. Yeah. Like what what do you want me to put? Because they're post? gonna say in their eyes, oh, it's too much. Yeah, it's too much. Or it's, and do, and do, 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 do. why do you why do you f- why do you feel... And their wives might be going, oh, cot rules, Yeah, he's fucking mad. Yeah, probably that as well. Yeah. Do, why do you feel I that in terms of all. in terms of like footballers or quite a lot of people in the public eye, do you feel that they're actually scared to talk about this these topics just purely because they're, they're just going to get shut down, aren't they? Yeah, repercussions. And of course there's repercussions that, repercussions. that, that follow so these way. It's, it's like... It, it's just a repercussion. And like you said to yourself, some people are like... Oh, I can't lose my mortgage, or I don't want to upset that, mm. or I don't want to say the wrong thing. So if I do that, I won't be able to work for that channel. Remember, like everything in this job is like keep that one sweet, keep the commission of yeah. Sky sweet, keep that one of the BBC sweet, and do this because also I better not do that because I've got to think of the next job that I'm going to have. Do you understand? But no one wants to talk. What the mad thing about it, like I just said, all these things are very serious things that happen. They involve 
children. They involve people's mm. lives. But people would rather just bury it under the sand and live in their safe little house on the prairie. Mm. And that's the way. And, that, and that's the way it is. Because unfortunately, yeah, that's just the way, way of the world, bro. So you, the guy that's actually facing it head on, you're nuts. Yeah, exactly. And so you, you end up going up and going, do you know what I mean? And like I said, all people are going to do out of everything that you say, the only time people's ever fully, fully going to understand you is when you get the right platform and you get the right person mm. to, to talk about it with. And I believe if you done a James English or something like that, like James would have you on the thing, that'd be the best platform. Do you know what, with the- um, <clears throat> Best platform, because it shut a lot of people up. With that kind of like stuff, I always think, even when I was playing football, I used to, I didn't used to play the game as a typical kind of footballer. Yeah. In the sense of, I wasn't shy to kind of, say how I felt in like team meetings and to yeah. the managers, to the chief executives or whatever it might be. I can be. see that. And it didn't fucking stand me in good stead because like the the guys who would play the game, who are not goody two shoes because they're really good people as well, but they knew yeah. how to play the game a lot yeah, better than me. Not fucking yeah. technically, by the way. Yeah. I just mean in that or off the pitch, they get given like fucking two, three year deals yeah, and blah, yeah, blah. Course. Whereas like if I was still doing it on the pitch, I was like thinking, hmm, there's still a chance of me not getting a contract just purely because I was a little bit controversial. Yeah. And I feel like they, people don't like that. They don't yeah. like you going against the grain. They like you, as you say, being a sheep and following. So that's why they look like so solid. We're rebels. Yeah, you love it, don't you? Yeah, we're rebels, bro. We don't. We didn't do it the systematic, the systematic way. We done it on our terms. I love it. You're not gonna give us a record label. All right, we'll set one up. Fuck, that's good though. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you're not gonna give us that. We'll do it that way. Are oh, you not gonna give us that? Okay, we'll get the money that way. Do you? Do you know what? Like, yeah. How amazing all you guys have gone on to achieve things. You know, as you mentioned, like you've done amazing things, right? You know, you've gone through a, a really bad patch in terms of like with the media yeah. side of things. You've come out the si other side, and you just con you proved to me as being so fucking strong that if someone's gonna hit you down, you're gonna find another way and just uh, keep, always. keep going. Always keep going. Always. Yeah. That's a graft in you from the early days yeah, of your teenage. Always. So, and then obviously, you know. Other artists who you who you've mentioned before are going on to like be movie stars or they're being you know big artists like yeah, um, Ashley. Ashley and Top yeah. Boy and and so on. Do you think that you're actually going against the system because as you mentioned before, you know you were the the first black couple who were in a celebrity world who would come out yeah, of yeah. you, um, and did you feel like people were judging you and now they're kind of thinking? we don't want you to succeed, but because you're so fucking good anyway, you're just going to succeed. And you, yeah. do you use that as a motivation? All the time. Like, like, do I say, like, I'm the worst person, yeah, because I'm not sensitive, yeah? I fucking know so, that. So, <laughs> I know, so I'm the worst person, yeah? So like, when I used to get haters, yeah, I used to do this tweet, yeah, every couple of weeks, yeah, people used to love it, yeah? Because I used to be like, oh, I need, some, can people keep hating on me and write me nasty things because it turns me on and I used to put like splash on. <laughs> <laughs> people used to be like, and then people do, and then even if you're a hater, you don't have to react to that. Yeah, you don't have to react. Yeah. Like, I'm like, please, it's like, send me hate. And then like, my mates just banter and be like, all right, you fucking talentless cunt. Or like, like, just like, yeah, yeah. But it's like, I buzz off things like that because I've always been oppressed, bro. I've always had to fight against the grain. So what's new? Yeah, there's no difference there's in your no, life. There's no, there's new. Everything I've had to do in my life, I've had to fight for. People's always tried to dissect my character, say bad shit about me. What boring, I don't give a fuck, bro. That's the, I, best, I, that's the best mentality. I honestly don't give a fuck, bro. I've literally created the second skin, layer of skin, bro. Do you know what I mean? Because the minute when you care, that's what they want you to do. They want you to be at home. They, mm. Like they said now, what's the new saying? They want to be living in my head rent-free, didn't they? Yeah. Fuck off. Do you, do you know what? When the first yeah. when the first press instance come out about me, I was fucked, right? I just come out of rehab and all this stuff come out. And I was... Um, my PR woman actually didn't want it to, to get run because she said, look, he's just come out of rehab. Can you, yeah. like, whatever else? And they like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they didn't give a fuck. No, we're running the story. Okay. But the second time that I was run on recently, I felt like more equipped and I just thought, fuck it. If yeah. People who like me want to be around me. If they don't, they don't. They're going to say, they're <laughs> going to say it, Nate. Yeah, regardless, remember, yeah. For you, I was actually saying this, right? Like, it was weird because I was going, if you go on David Cottrell's page, it does not look like an ex-footballer's page. Mm. So all these quotes, yeah, yeah. all these deep statements, all these things that he's talking that are true, that people are judging him on, is like literally is nothing to like, when you, you know, you're on an ex-pros page and it's like, you know, life after football, I'm yeah. back to the games, I'm doing my commentary work, yeah. I'm with my family <laughs> and I'm going on nice holidays. Yeah, You're just totally not that. Do you know what? I, I, I throw in yeah. a throwback now and again, but... Um, I'm getting the odd picture Yeah, of the odd picture now and again, just, yeah. a just a throwback. But I just like talking about 
Look, if I can help one person, that's there always been my mentality, my, my mentality with anything. Like with my foundation, if we, we're helping people with mental health, my thing is always trying to help one person. That's right. But that's not trying to me to portray myself of being perfect because I've made fuck it. I make loads of fuck ups. I still fuck up uh, less now than I used to, but we still all make, make mistakes. I don't betray do. myself you... being perfect. I'm just putting out what I believe in and I state facts. And if you don't like it, don't fucking follow me. Yeah, there you go. And listen, and it's simple. A, is it, bro. The social media world is is freedom. So it's up to you. I'm not forcing you to follow me, yeah. bro. I'm not begging you to follow me. So if you don't like what David Cottrell says, then, then just don't yeah, follow it. It's fucking mad. Bro, this is, how, this is how I look at your story if I wake up. I go, I go, <laughs> ooh, <laughs> cut, right, you know? <laughs> and I get about that because I love you, innit? So yeah. I just like, and I go, true, true, true. Bit braver with that one, cut. <laughs> I just have a laugh, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, but... Bro, you're talking sense and people don't like sense. That's that's the thing. They don't like the, they don't like the truth. I think with you, it's weird because you're not and I kinda put this like, you're not media trained. When I say you're not media trained, we come from two different professions. Mm. My job, I had to spend a lot more time with with it, it with um interviewers, newspapers than you did. Yeah. You just have to do answer back to sports journalists yeah, and it's the, so different. Pertaining into the game. Mm. You you're probably learning more how how Devil, you know, the, the devilism within the, the media is now, now that you're out of football yeah. and you see what they do when you just got time in your hands and you're like, what the hell? Mm. So with you, your filter compared to my filter would be different because I've already been through it and yeah. experienced it. You're like, you're ahead of the game. Yeah, I'm ahead <laughs> of it. But, so, but when you're doing it, I get it because I'm like, oh, he's, he's me, this guy. He's like, he just, just, don't give he's just had enough. Mm. Do you know what I mean? He's had enough. But then the day, what do people like about people like you? You do it and you still carry on. Mm. Do you know what? I just you, don't give. I don't. I don't give. You don't f- get. You don't get bull- bullied don't away get, from your own beliefs. Yeah. Because how can I take away your own beliefs, bro? That's your human right. Yeah, bro. your mouth's on a fucking. That's your, if you your human right. Yeah. Like what? Well, I can't control that. So with me, I just go. When when someone like yourself finds the balance, yeah, you're gone, mate. Because <laughs> people know you're talking. They know you're talking the truth. But like I said, people. Like I said, I got a message. One message, one weirdo. I don't even know where it's from. Why are you doing David Cotton interview for him? He says this about people being killed. I'm like, that's because that's what you want to believe. Yeah, exactly. That you put that picture painting in your head. You don't even know the geezer. That's. I feel like the whole fucking world is it's like yeah. a, it's like a circus. It's really, gone you know? doolally. It's, it's, it's gone doolally. Yeah, it's mad. And you can't like, see anything. Fully like a circus. Do you know what? You, as you rightly say, you could. We're living in a world right now where. You watch it. You even walk down the streets these days. If you see a guy or woman or or whatever else, you know, coming down the road mm. and they were and they've they've just they're driving a fucking Ferrari. The first thing out of people's mouths is flashy prick. Yeah, of course. But they don't know the hard work that that person has got to you know to get in these things. But we're so judgmental and so that's there, right. And they'll turn around and go, "Oh, one got the Ferrari in black anyway. What should be to red." Me the other day? <laughs> you see it the other day on my Instagram when I put up the Ferrari on my Instagram and people just started abusing me. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's 10 years old. It's not, it's not a modern play. <laughs> I was like... Who gives a fuck? But I, I love all that shit. Because I was like... And I just... And they, what A famous rap site, they, they love me. They just put me up there and you see all the hate in the comments. And I went on... I left a message in the comments. I never used to do that. And I went... But like, I went, chill out, people, man. It's just a car, man. Yeah, 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 exactly. Jesus Christ, man. It's just a car. <laughs> It doesn't save me putting you in ignition, it drives. You love it, don't you? And by the way, if you don't want to, if you look try to pay my petrol, yeah, you you there, so shut up. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Do you know what I mean? So it is what it is, man. I wanna go, I wanna quickly move on um to uh, last few things because yeah. I've kept because I've kept you. Now, two, so, uh, 15 minutes, cool. I want I wanna know. I know you love Liverpool. Yeah. I want to throw in a few football things. I could speak <laughs> to you for about fucking another twenty hours, to be I honest. Know, but, man. So I wanna know. I want to know two things on a, on a, to advice the best advice you've ever been given. Yeah. The best advice you'd give someone else, and then I want to finish with your best Liverpool all time eleven. Oh shit, so this, man! So these are the last three things. They're quick fire. Okay. So what's the best advice you've ever been given? The best advice I've ever been given is from a guy called Tony Banton, who we call the Rass. He's a raster in the area that I've grown up, and he says. Young Harvey, there's not a rule in the rule book saying that you have to be around negative people. You are controller of your own energy. Make surround yourself with the energy that you want in your life. I'll never forget that. That's amazing. It's so true. Changed my life. Changed my life. 
And how? And and you've kept to that since he said always, that. Always. And what's the best advice you'd ever give someone? The best advice I'd give would be that exact same message. That's good though. <laughs> because it, I don't think it could get any better than that. Mm. Because what it is is like you know situations that we get put in like. Oh, he made me do that, or she made me do that, bro. Be a controller of your own energy. Yeah. I'm not talking about a random thing. Like, if you walk out here now and someone gets knocked over, or yeah. someone's in front of you, you gotta help them. That's like that's different. That's just life <laughs> yeah. stuff. Do you know what I mean? But in terms of how you present yourself and how you be, man, just be a control of your energy, man, and remove them negative foes. Like, I'm, someone could ring me now and they could be like, blah blah, there, and said, I'm not sitting around that idiot. I don't, my, my day they don't deserve my do you know what I get a, I get that they one they don't deserve fucking, to be a part of my day when someone even when someone messages me do you know that do you yeah. know when their negative energy is like that in person yes and when they message you like think fuck and you're like fuck <laughs> off, uh, man. I, I just don't need this today like, I, don't, I don't do energy drainers I don't do negative people like and that's the best bit, bit of advice so in receival of that that what was given to me you're gonna pass it on I'll pass it on why would you not and, I, and I always works. do pass it on and your best all-time 11. Oh, this is hard. Why would you end on this? This is, this is a good one to end right, on. Right, okay. Right, all, by the way, all-time favourite Liverpool player yeah. first. Who is it? All-time favourite. All-time favourite. I've got to do it because he's like an uncle to me. <laughs> he, he, no, he's the biggest inspiration me being a young black man. John Barnes. He was unreal though, wasn't yeah. he? Fucking what and, player. You know, we speak every day, man. That's Uncle John, man. Do you love like, him, do you? Yeah, that's where... He's like my uncle, man. Me and him go to a lot of games together. He's the one that sorts me out most of my tickets. We do a lot of work together. He's he, he done a podcast. He's got to be Uncle John, man. I'm a, I'm a Jamaican boy, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Uncle John. And all time 11. Right. Bruce Grobola. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I've got to say that because. What formation are you going with, by the way? Ah, oh, bloody hell, Cots. Is it 4 2 3 or 4? I'm, I'm going to go. <laughs> Shit. You're killing me, yo. It's weird because 4 4 2 seems a thing of the past now. But you can still go with it. No, I'm, I'm going to go with. I'm going to go 4 4 2. Fuck yeah, it. good. Keep to your principles. Fuck Keep it. strong. Okay. I'm going to go Bruce Grobbler. Yeah. Because it's easy to. Like, you might go Allison or Rayner, but you've got to think of he started. He was the, the he was starter a one, yeah. of the crazy goalkeepers and he was a great shot stopper. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Left back. It's got to be Andy Robertson because I can't. I, I honestly He's ain't so seen good. any left back. Oh, yeah, oh, you, you can't compare Steve Staunton to him because Steve Staunton couldn't get forward by Andy <laughs> Robertson. Centre offs. I think I've got to include modern people now. I'm actually going to go. Oh, he's going to kill me for this. I'm actually going to go Van Dyke, Van Dyke, and Sammy Hippier over Carragher. Carragher's going to kill me for seeing this. Do you he, know what? By the way, I fucking love him. I think he's class. Oh, Carragher's brilliant, yeah, man. Class. Yeah, Carragher's brilliant. When I go to his bar in New York, he always goes, Give me a song. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some song off. So, but also, yeah. touching on Vi Van Dyke, amazing player. There's been a lot of comparisons lately about the centre backs in the all time history of Premier League players. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think that he'd have to go a little bit longevity in terms of winning a few more trophies and doing it over a long period of time to be compared to like Rio? Because Rio, yeah, for, definitely. for me, Rio is number one. Yeah, the best I agree with you. In the league, yeah? I agree. So, what, so what, would you class him in like still top five Premier League centre backs of all time? Yeah, now would because I think he's colossal. I just think that. Yeah. Um, I, now, I, I definitely now think that he's, say for example, he's up there, isn't he? He's surpassed, with no disrespect yet, but I do feel like he's surpassed, he's like on. Yapstam level now. Yeah, I love Yap. Yeah. yeah, do you know what I mean? Because he's done it so early. Yeah. That's why. Because that was an elite centre off list. Mm. But I'm gonna say yeah, so I'm gonna say him and Sammy man. Sammy was just he's the... uh, how can you be a guy with no pace, yeah, and read the game like yeah, he that? He read it so and, he had to. And never ever see him really, really go on the internet and tell me when you see Sammy get done. But <laughs> like, I could actually go like to carry yeah, he's gonna have me for this, but remember what Thierry Henry done to him, yeah? Was, that was a mate. Was... And Zola. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I've yeah. never really seen Sammy get Done. You know what I mean? But Henri used to do that to yeah. fucking Eric. Who, who's your right back? Now, this is hard, yeah, because, ah, uh, this is bad because I love Trent, but I don't think Trent's, Trent's a great defender. Mm. And I, I, I'm, his techers are mad, though. But his techers is a fucking it's joke. joke. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And I do know the modern game's played differently. So I'm going to go old school. I'm going to go Rob Jones. Yeah? Yeah. Tell you what I used to love, I used to love uh, Steve Finn as yeah, well. Yeah, I love, I love Finns. I love Finns, But he was yeah. only there for a little yeah, bit of time. Yeah, but he was there for a little while. Yeah. But I'm gonna, I think Rob Jones was like the first like bombing on right back. And I just loved him. I loved the energy that he played with. So I'm going to go Rob Jones, Sammy Hippia, um, Van Dyke and Robertson. Van Dyke and Robertson. And then, uh, I could go way back to Alan Hansen and that, but I'm just going to go a bit more modern. Who's your uh, midfield? 
Right wing. We'll start with right wing. Well, <laughs> left wing is going to be John Barnes. So I was going to keep yeah. it there. Centre midfield is going to be Gerard. He's a joke. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Fucking joke. Obviously. And I'm going to put Graham Souness next to Steven Gerrard. Yeah. Just for like the warrior that he yeah, was. Yeah, he loved it, didn't he? In midfield. Because you think with Gerard's ability and him playing. And but then Gerard had a lot, didn't he? Yeah, and then Souness is smashing you and can play too. Right wing. I'm going to have to. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I've never seen a. <laughs> is that Steve McManaman and Mo Salah? <laughs> so, so and that's. Got but, it. Mo, hasn't it? I'm going to be real. I've got to be loyal and give it to Steve McManaman just because he was a joke because as well, he, because, he, because he served a lot longer for Liverpool yeah. and he went and played for Real Madrid. And Mo hasn't done the big international move yet to prove that he's world, world, world class. I know he's going to leave Liverpool at some point. So wherever he goes, you know, McManaman went to Real Madrid when English players wasn't doing well in yeah. Spain. And he was a legend there. So I'm going to go Steve McManaman on the right. Wow. Yeah. No, fuck, no Salah, no Mane, yeah? Yeah, okay. no, no, it's harsh because, and these are players that I love, but I'm more doing it on, but watch this now, I'm going to throw you now, <laughs> right? Who's the strikers? This is weird now, I'm going to go Michael Owen. Yeah. But you thought I was going to say that, didn't you? I th yeah. Robbie Fowler. Yeah, he's flames. So I'm going to go Robbie, now watch yeah. this, I'm just going to fucking throw you. <laughs> I'm actually going to go 4-4-1-1, four, 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 one, one. but I'm going to go Michael Owen, but do you know who I'd play off Michael Owen? Who? You ready? I'm ready. Just because I know we lost him, Sadio. Because yeah. I believe that with Sadio, you go, like, when he's been playing as a 10 lately, he's proved that you brought in Diaz. So you're going 4 4 1 1. Yeah. So Owen up top and then it's Mane off. Sadio off him just to cause havoc. Yeah. Because you know what it is? You, they, Klopp tried to test Sadio all the time. Here's Mo Salah, no problem. Still consistent. Here's Diaz, no problem. Consistent. There you go. Play down the centre. Still consistent. Do you think it's a massive loss, him going? Oh, I'm gutted. You gutted, yeah? I'm gutted. But thinking that we got Carvalho, the kid coming in from Fulham. And I, I know, but Mane is like, it's not good. I know, uh, do you know what? They I said Ledonoski, but I'm like, he's 33. I know, but he's still going to bag your goals. Yeah. I but... think he's still got two years left in. But I think Mane going and Haaland going to Man City. Man City have got stronger and Liverpool have got weaker. weaker. And I think Gabby Abonglaho said that on TalkSport. Yeah. And I agree with him. He's but, definitely right. But... Can you see, at the, you lot are saying this now just because it's only just happened now. In your heart of hearts, yeah. can you see Jurgen Klopp letting Sadio Mane go without a serious backup plan, plan in that genius German you'd mind? Like to th you'd like to think so. Because, Come on. But Best recruitment in the world, Liverpool. Yeah, of course they have, yeah. On, on minimal budget. Jota, 30 million. Mane, 30 million. Salah, 40 million. It's mad, isn't it? These are the biggest bargains known to man. Yeah, they are. Ever. And do you know what I remember? Because I'm a, I'm a United fan. Yeah. And when um, people were talking about, when Van Dyke went to Liverpool for like 75 mil, people were thinking, oh my God, that for a centre-back. Well, there you go. But now you're looking and thinking, fuck me, it's good business. It's a bargain. Yeah, it's a bargain. So, And I want my last question to yeah. you. Um, one of my friends put this out there the other day and I want to know your view on it because he's fucking got amazing football quizzes, actually. Yeah. He always does it. Um... He, he asked, who's better, Kevin De Bruyne or Gerrard? Who would you go for? Steven Gerrard. Why? Because <laughs> Gerrard could tackle and De Bruyne can't. And that's the only reason. That, that's just true though, isn't it? Yeah. Because, and I agree with what he said. He said that everything that De Bruyne can do well, Gerrard can do just as well. He can shoot, he can cross, he can pass the ball. Like, like short. Yeah, he can do everything. Uh, and his all-round game. Bruyne's Unbelievable. Oh, so good. So imagine, I've got to get so petty, I've got to be like, you don't tackle. Yeah. That's exactly. the only thing I can pick out. They're margins, aren't Because they? technically, they're both a joke. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, they, both, got, they both got six eyes, like, yeah. all around their fucking heads. I don't know how they see certain passes. But one thing I will say, Hayden told me a great story, right? And I remember going to Hayden, like, Hayden, Hayden Mullins, you don't know me, me and yeah. Cockles' friend. Who's the best player you've played against? Like, today? We, we sit in pubs and we have a lot. Skulls. Yeah, Skulls technically thing, but I always had a good game against Skulls. I didn't feel anything with Skulls. So Hayden's like, Gerard, mate. Hayden's like, played against him when I was at West Ham or something. Hayden said he smashed him in the first 10 minutes. Yeah? <laughs> Hayden smashed Gerard. Yeah. He said that Gerard looked at him, got up and gone. gone. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, like this game went like, literally just went, yeah? <laughs> Hayden said like, literally about 10 minutes later, Gerard just munched him. <laughs> just like letting him know what's going on. Like, but Hayden was like, 
what's scary about him, he plays with so much intensity. Mm. And he said, one time he said, like, for about 10 minutes, he just kept hitting everything with the outside of his boot. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. But yeah. with pace. He's mad. Hayden said, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, of course. Could get near him. And he's up for a He's up he's for, up a for anything. Yeah, yeah. And I went, yeah. He's got the lot, haven't he? Yeah. So, De Bruyne, as much as I think De Bruyne is fantastic, yeah, just for the fact that Stevie Gerard... Because even De Bruyne, I know that if the, so if someone smashes De Bruyne, you can get him you can get him off his game a bit. Because mm. he won't fancy it. Do you know what I mean? I've seen it when Fabinho gets into for, for De Bruyne's... You know, Fabinho, you know, you run past me, you pull your shirt, you fucking put a stud down the back of you. <laughs> De Bruyne starts, oh, fucking... He's a moaning guy. Oh. Yeah, well, Gerard... Be on it, wouldn't he? Mm, come he'd on get, then. Get you back. But that was different. Yeah. Do you know, like Vieira and Keane and oh, Gerard? That was the best oh, time. Come then. on, Cots, man. The best. That was the best. The best. Right. Um, yeah. So we've got your 11. I love having you on. I would, honestly, I could speak to you for another fucking three Anytime, weeks. Man. But thank we'll you for, thank you for, jo- yeah, thank you for joining me. Anytime, brother. <laughs> <laughs> we've done it, Cots. It's done, mate. Finally. Bye. So-